Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we are back. The only podcast that's intercontinental when we eat French toast. So let's go. Let's go, fellas. Let's finish season one, that 52nd episode. And we got some stuff to talk about. The road to WrestleMania. We did it last year. Started with the Super Bowl. We're going to finish this year with the Super Bowl. So let's get into it, fellas. We're missing. Wait. Before we go any further, we're missing somebody. Who are we missing? Who are we missing? Thomas? Mr. Mr. 49er himself. Yeah, what's his name again? Yeah, I, I think he's feeling the pressure of the Niners maybe not showing up tomorrow. Yeah, he can't hack it. Can't hack it. So we'll see. We'll have to chirp him next week when, when he comes back on. But he'll probably watch the podcast as soon as I post it. Who knows? So, Chris, if you're watching... Yeah, bad, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. So, words to live by. It is fun. <laughs> so, let's talk to the guy with the gargoyle on his head. <laughs> and take it from here. This is your segment. Well, it's an alligator, you know. <laughs> it, is, it is Mardi Gras time. There, there, is, there is a parade going on. So, Usually, uh, this... that's the first time you've had an alligator on your head and it hasn't been a crab. <laughs> take it away sir all right guess what this this email is brought to you by goongard goongard.com check them out hey, use the promo code 1973 Goongard. check them out Goongard. right here it sets up in less than 10 Goongard. seconds microwave. good stuff you can actually talk with them you know maybe one time i actually Goongard. need to do one of these emails with one of these things in i probably should do that huh all right this one right here, this is from James from Flemingsburg, Sweden. Man, we're going continental now. We're going across the pond. Can you believe Thomas, it? Thomas, keep you that in mind. It? You know? So this question is uh, coming in. It says uh, from James, uh, hello, gentlemen. How can, you, how can aspiring podcasters effectively grow their channel and audience? Are there specific strategy platforms or content approaches that you recommend for increasing visibility and engagement in competitive podcasting landscape? And P.S. How come you never reveal, reveal the picture of the, in quotation figures, only fan modeling your gear? Got to give the people what they want. Gentlemen? Uh, thanks, James. Uh, really appreciate the uh, email. So it's pretty in-depth. Let me hit the P.S. first. I don't think uh, it's right to post anything that we appreciate that's uh, it's supposed to be private. I think that's somebody's permission to share their their stuff, and it's not up to us. It has to be given us permission. We would share. I think a lot of people would enjoy it. Uh, probably spark a little bit more uh, maybe stuff to talk about, but um, we cannot post stuff unless somebody allows us to. So with that being said, Major question about the podcast. Tom, what do you think about growing the podcast? I, I find it's not as easy as people make it out to be. No, it's got to be. The, the things I've noticed is you have to be consistent. You have to put out an episode every week just to be and just keep pounding at it. Just got to be consistent. You got to be patient. You're not going to get the ton of views right off the bat. And if you, I mean, not to say you can't, but you just have to be patient because some weeks you're going to have. 25 views and some weeks you're going to have a couple thousand which it's happened to us and you got to be put yourself on as many platforms as possible pandora iheart spotify uh youtube i mean there's a ton of them you gotta you just gotta uh put a lot of work in it. it's not easy i mean i know how much and you've done a lot of the work so you've done a ton of it so um, you could probably answer this better than any of us i i think it's tough because uh in order to get anything monetized where you have uh, generate uh, money coming in. It's it's really hard to half-ass it. You have to really be all in. And the people that you're all in with also have to be on the same page with you as far as talking about whatever you're into. Find like-minded individuals and find a, a subject that you really know a lot about and don't try to deviate from that. And especially if you have uh, uh, an eclectic view on that, whether if 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 it's an entertainment view, if it's a sports view, stay within your genre. Don't try to venture out and, uh, you know, keep your content uh, no longer than uh, 
you know, every other week without missing an episode. I, I think uh, weekly or bi-weekly, monthly does, just doesn't cut it. I think you have to really grind it out and uh, stay relevant, getting people to want to come on and hear your, your opinion on stuff. And maybe it'll lead to emails like we have. And I think um, the audio feed has uh, really taken off for us. So my, my thing is be consistent. Uh, don't expect to get rich overnight and surround yourself with the, you know, like-minded people that are, you know, willing to just spend a half an hour, an hour with you every week and just shoot the shit with you and whatever. And Tom, speaking of international, um, you want to mention uh, our analytics on where people have downloaded. Now, this is strictly from the audio feeds. This is not a YouTube, but I'm sure that there's been a lot of uh, downloads from different places on YouTube. But where have you done a oh, deep it with Tom? We've done the deep dive on the website and uh, that we have that gives the analytics and it's it's remarkable where we've got and we've we've got viewers and downloads on five of the seven continents at uh, Africa Antarctica you got to step up your game because you're the only two that are missing but internationally it's crazy I mean we've had downloads from Belgium Paris Russia Singapore all over Germany Sweden Ukraine Japan India. Australia, New Zealand, uh, Argentina, and all over U.S. and Canada. I mean, it's it's crazy. And what I want to do is make it a little more interactive. And what we plan on doing is putting a, uh, not really a poll, but putting something on our Facebook page. And we want to know where you're watching the show from and how you heard about us. So we want you to uh, comment on that. Or you can even go on the YouTube page and comment after this post song, after we post this episode, and just comment and tell us where you are and how you heard about us. Very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, you'd be amazed. Uh, go ahead, Ed. I see a chime No, in. I was just going to say, too, I, just to kind of circle back on, on the content part, not so much on the nuts and bolts, but I think, you know, Andy, Tom, Brad, myself we all do a pretty good job of actually doing a little bit of research before we actually sit down with each other about topics and that type of thing so we're not sitting there saying like um the whole time i mean we actually come with you come to you with actually real stats and real figures and and, and that type of thing and real facts and that really makes a huge difference yeah um the the thing that we try to do is try to i'm going to try to stick with a format where you know, once the NFL starts, we go into the picks. We try to stay relevant more with the wrestling. We kind of get away from it because of time restraints. We're in the road to WrestleMania. We got we got our homework to do. Still watch the Iron Claw movie. We haven't had a chance to do that. I haven't had a chance. We got to do a deep dive. Right now. Well, dude, they pull that out of the theater locally. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it should be streaming pretty soon. Maybe you yeah. guys can check it out or whatever. Um, yeah, me and Ed will have a streaming party. There you go. Pants optional. Yeah, that's true. Um, Pants optional. Brad's going to catch up on his Dark Side of the Ring history so we can uh, start talking about that. The new season of Dark Side, we're going to cover that uh, all the way to WrestleMania. We'll be all over that. The Vince McMahon saga, we're on, on to that. Um, speaking oh. of that, let's, let's segue into that. Um, the latest with the Vince McMahon saga. Brad, you want to bring us up to speed with the, a little... Uh, Little stories here and there. Yeah. Um, I just want to say, first of all, you know, we're in full Mardi Gras swing down here on the on the Gulf Coast. Um, I did have to show my dick a lot of times to get these beads. Uh, so many times, in fact, that they actually started calling me Vince McMahon. So hey oh damn, right Tom, not even a smile there. Right. No, 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 oh no. There's, there's a lot of people nervous right now. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the legal team cleared it, fellas. I can make all the Vince McMahon jokes I want. Okay? There you go. I, I love it. Um, I love it. I love yeah. it. So, uh, to a better yeah, guy, it never happened. Is, is, uh, how do you pronounce her name? Ashley Massaro? Yep. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, sexually assaulted on a USO tour overseas. Um, it was a military doctor. Uh, I read the NCIS even went in and investigated this guy. Uh, you know, after the way, way after the fact, um, and, and and I guess from their perspective, there wasn't, you know, any charges pressed or anything like that. But uh, the story here is that WWE, Vince McMahon and the, and the leadership didn't know or knew about it, didn't do anything about it. 
didn't protect her, didn't offer her resources, didn't give her any kind of care after the fact, nothing. And, uh, you know, sadly, you know, uh, she, she wound up, you know, uh, taking her own life, you know, years later down the road. So um, very unfortunate. And then so Laurenitis, who's kind of starting to sing on Vince McMahon, uh, had his legal team release a statement just out of the blue saying that they knew all about it. So, and uh, uh, years and of, of denying it. And, you know, she's, she, you know, like I said, she, she been suicide, she passed away, but now you know, her story is kind of getting validated, corroborated, you know, and uh, it's really unfortunate, but damn, like it, what else are they covering up? Yeah. Um, two, two quick things. There are, I forgot when we were doing the timeline when we started this last week, I forgot to mention that Vince McMahon is not Teflon. He did lose two cases, lost one to Jesse Ventura on his rights to call mm. CM home video. And he had fallen out with Jesse for years. And uh, Jesse was the first guy to sue him when Coliseum home video started selling the videos best of the WWF volume one, blah, blah. And Jesse was on there doing commentary and whatnot. He sued him for his royalty rights and actually won. One of the oh, few guys shit. that did. And the other guy, I don't know the, the details of the case, but surprisingly, Bill Eady, who was the mass superstar, also acts from demolition in 1991, sued Vince. They dragged out for 10 years until 2001 when he won the court case. So there's two guys that have had their wins over Vinnie Mac, a Mr. McMahon, as they say. So that's uh that's something to be uh, noted. So he he does break. It just it it doesn't show too often on the uh, on the resume. And uh, what oh, there was something else that I was reading this week um, to do with that case, and it was uh, somebody else they had talked to, and they were they were saying some stuff, but it was all alleged. So I don't, it doesn't really stick out in my mind. Tom, you did you hear anything this week? Well, there's another uh, Ashley Mazzaro and Vince McMahon thing is when she uh, after she appeared on the cover of Playboy, she's she mm. accused him of sexual harassment. And in the affidavit that they have, I guess she said that um, he kept calling her. He was harassing her, calling her hotel room when they were at the shows at the for the wherever they were for their shows. And uh, she went to Kevin Dunn, and this is her allegedly telling the story. Anyway, she called Kevin Dunn and said that Vince McMahon wouldn't leave her alone, and he told her just not to answer the phone. And mm. I guess when she got to the uh, shows he suddenly started becoming her own writer and started writing her own thing. And she says her, her kind of nixing his advances ruined her career. And she said he just, that's when all the, the storylines that kind of got shady with her started was because of that, she says. And it, Paul London, who she dated at the time was on a podcast this week. And he, he corroborated all the, everything that came out in the affidavit. So, I mean, I'm not saying it's true or not, but I think you're going to start seeing more and more stuff coming out because she actually, there's another part of the affidavit and they redacted the name, but she, she put in the affidavit that there was another female wrestler that had been raped. She didn't say who it was though. So I don't know who it would be. I didn't hear that part. So uh, definitely the plot thickens. It's stuff that mm. uh, I don't know if they're going to try, get, try to drag it out because of Vince McMahon's age. Two quick things, one, both Brock Lesnar related. Uh, so the new uh, WWE 2K24 uh, game is coming out this year, and it's the 40 years of WrestleMania. It's supposed to be 200 uh, legends and current wrestlers on there, so it's loaded. It's going to be loaded. Uh, Brock Lesnar was on the cover of the Deluxe Edition, gone, John Cena, in more in the forefront. He was on there, but they just made his character a little bigger. Uh, will Brock Lesnar still be in the game? I don't know, because there is a showcase mode where you play through the WrestleManias. So stay tuned with that. And my second Brock Lesnar point was uh, people don't remember this. So when Sable left the WWE for good, she filed a sexual harassment lawsuit against the WWE. What happened from that? I don't know. Uh, probably something we could look into this week. But isn't 
the irony with the whole situation coming back yep. full circle. Um, full circle. Yeah. So uh, it also removed Brock from the uh the the WWE intro for uh, Raw and SmackDown. They got replaced by LA Knight. Uh, the thing that that's funny about the history and a race in history is I don't think that they should take these guys out of the history. Just don't mention them. Like, how are you going to have people on a streaming network going back and watching the historic stuff? Like, I like to go back and rewatch things. You really, you're going to take Jimmy Snooker out. You're going to take now Brock Lesnar out. Well, how are you going to take Vince McMahon out? He was the commentator mm -hmm. since I was a kid by ringside. How are you going to take him out? How? It just doesn't make sense to me. If you don't want to mention him or talk about it or say, hey, go back and watch it, fine, but don't erase it. That's just asinine to me. Mm -hmm. uh, for what, uh, the, what he did is, but leave it on there for entertainment purposes, mm -hmm. so you can follow a timeline or go back and watch the history of um, Brad. The Rock. What 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 is going on with The Rock, bro? This is probably <laughs> the biggest work in WWE history because, and and I texted the group chat in this. I can't tell. The lines are so blurred. I don't know if it's really The Rock being heel Rock, which is incredible. I'm all I'm here all for it but I can't tell the difference between where the work ends and like real life starts because if you, did you guys watch the press release uh, yesterday? Was it yesterday or, or Thursday yep. or something? I don't yep. remember. Um, there was a part where the crowd is booing the rock and he looked so butthurt. I was like, I think he is. I don't think he's acting. I think he is. I think he legitimately came out after he took, got placed in a TKO and I think he was expecting his his appearance in WrestleMania. He thought he was going to save it. I think he legitimately believed that. And then when the, the fans started this We Want Cody movement, I mean, if you went to any post on The Rock's Instagram or his daughter's Instagram, every other comment was hashtag We Want Cody. It got to the point where The Rock even posted a doctored video to his Insta where he cut out the Cody Rhodes part because he thought it would save him a little bit of a harassment, and the fans went in so hard. But at the 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 the, the following SmackDown and uh, I think Monday Night Raws, allegedly WWE was out there giving fans "We Want Cody" signs to hold up on TV, so they were they were gaming it up, you know. But if you watch that press release, I think he was legitimately butthurt that the fans weren't chanting, you know, go rock and stuff like that. I mean, this this is incredible. This is the one of the best storyline, you know, segments I've seen in a long time of wrestling. I, I'm cool. all here. I'm, I don't care who. I want the rock for the title. I want Cody so, Rose over the title. I, I, with Vince McMahon out of the picture, you got to, I'm hoping that some way somehow the title gets unified and we get rid of these ugly ufc looking wwe belts all of them uh, ah. go, ahead. go ahead ed ah this is a quote from the phantom about this i talked to the phantom today about this and i said and this is in quotation fingers from the phantom they could have rock beat rollins and swerve everyone and have roman beat cody then you would have rock and roman both with the world titles then work with something with them fighting about who's the real leader down the line for SummerSlam. Okay. So a couple things. What about if uh, Cody wins somehow? I'll throw a couple scenarios at you. Cody yeah. Crybabies, baby. You can, yeah. The Cody Crybabies, dude. I love it. Cody rock Cry is the best rock. Let's be honest. So what? what's not to say that Cody some way wins? And as he's having his moment, maybe they let him get the juice out, which would be sweet, get the juice mm -hmm. out a little bit. All of a sudden, he's all busted up. He has his one moment, and then Damian Priest casts in the money in the bank and swerves yes. him, and he doesn't get the title. He has it it's for the, a millisecond. It's the, it's the that Daniel would be Bryan. incredible. It's the Daniel Bryan thing with when he won the belt, yep. and then Triple H came out, and yep. Okay. 
I got one more for you. I don't know how this would play out, but Ed, you got to follow along. So WrestleMania is in Philly. Paul Heyman, ECW, Philly. What happens if Paul Heyman pulls the ultimate swerve in the in Philly and screws everybody and goes with the rock? And it's heel rock and Paul Heyman. And screws everybody in Philly, the ECW home. Or well, some way, shape, or form that happens. I and love the it. People would be, even though Philly's a heel town. They would be livid, 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 livid. But we still got an elimination chamber going into it, and they haven't announced anything out of that. So, what's what's the Tom? No, I, I think they had. I think they had to change everything on the fly with every how. I don't think they expected the build up that Cody's gotten and all the backlash they've gotten, and they could not go into Philadelphia with the Rock and Roman and Roman Reigns as their main event. The, the fans would, you know, the Philly ECW fans would, oh. would take it. I mean, Bully Ray Dudley was just talking about this on his podcast a few days ago. And he said, you cannot do that. You, I mean, the fans would hijack the whole entire show. Mm-hmm. So They were uh, already hijacking the We Want Cody movement. Like, they had to address it. And if Cody you watch that, that press release, CM Punk was the MVP. I felt like they gave him a mic and they were like, bro, this is where Triple H wins. He was like, just go talk. He was like, where were y'all at 2013 where they did it to me? He was like, this is pro wrestling. You don't slap a man like that on TV. He's like, Cody, you need to go beat that ass. I mean, CM Punk (laughs) was on some shit. Yeah. Uh, And and it was completely uncensored and unscripted, man. It was amazing. So uh, it it's amazing how with Vince McMahon out of the picture and having somebody that is a legit, I got to give the devil his due, Triple H, grew up a wrestling fan, grew up an old school fan, loves old school wrestling storytelling. If for some way, shape, or form he is removed because of the fallout with Vince McMahon, and let's just say because The Rock is on the board of directors, he does not have that same... I'd hate to use the wrong word, pedigree that Triple H has for old school wrestling. Even though he has a father and a grandfather, which we all know who they are, saw the bloodline tree, which was really cool. I like that. I actually paused it and tried to zoom in so I could look at everything. There is a uh, there is a wild card in the story because Jacob Fatu is now a free agent. MJF mm-hmm. is a free agent. All these things could come into play, not saying MJF, but that could be a major night after WrestleMania pop. Who knows? Who knows? Not not a lot of matches have really been scheduled for WrestleMania, and it's really close. So the plot thickens. Um, yeah. How many think? weeks away is, is WrestleMania, Andy? It's always uh, around the first week of April. It's it's always around weeks. the birthday. Yep. So I think it's what a uh, uh, April. What is it, Tom? Do you remember? April I don't 6th. remember. April sixth. Yeah, I think so. so it, I'm like ninety nine percent sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, definitely going to be interesting. There's a pay per view in between, which I don't think there should be. I think the build up from Royal Rumble to WrestleMania should be one straight shot. Yeah. Story, story, story. Build up, build up, build up, and, and then the blow off. Yeah, and then the blow off. It's funny. It's funny because people are saying the Rock. You know, tried to save the Fast and Furious franchise and got the boot. He tried to save the DC uh, expanded universe, and you know, Black Adam kind of sucked. <laughs> if we're being honest, as a superhero movie, then he tried to save the XFL and it crashed and burned. So a lot of folks are saying like this is like one of his last ditch efforts to try to, you know, be be uh, you know relevant in something in the entertainment industry. So yeah. It, it just uh, sometimes if you got a good personality, it doesn't make you a good mm-hmm. businessman. Sometimes, no. but, you know, you gotta. Sometimes you're not good at everything you try, and his career is kind of fizzling right now. So mm-hmm. maybe that's uh, you know, sign him going back to the roots, and they need him. I mean, uh, yeah, they could use him. I mean, who's who's not gonna tell The Rock to uh, not show up at WrestleMania? I mean, that's that's money right that's there. Just for, yeah. They, they do that. yeah, nobody's gonna say no to that. Yeah. But 
Isn't isn't it kind of funny how uh, The Rock kind of comes in and does what Hogan used to do in WCW? <laughs> that ain't gonna work for me, brother. Yeah. So yep. it, it's Tom. The Rock. He's and he he's supposedly he's brought in his own writer, his his uh, own to write his own whatever storyline is gonna be in to put so. You know he's gonna work. come out looking good. Yeah, he's gonna come out looking good regardless. So yeah, yeah. Well, Hogan had Vince though. Yeah, Hogan and Vince were tight. The Rock is kind of just pull, trying to pull rank essentially. You know, and that's not gonna fly. I mean, we're I think we're kind of seeing that right now. Like it's just not working. Yeah, that ain't gonna work for you, Brock or Rock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Either one of you. No. <laughs> So uh, um, I do want to say I zoomed in on the uh, that bloodline picture and they included Umaga, which I thought was uh, kind of special because he kind of got wrote off of the WWE universe because he died of an overdose and everything. He got kind of they whitewashed him. So they, I thought it was really neat that they put him on the bloodline. And Jimmy Snuka that, was on there, graphic. too. Who was that? Jimmy Snuka was on oh, there. Nice. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Uh, they had uh, Tamina and uh, Deuce on there, which was his son also from uh, that awful mm. 50s gimmick that they had there. Deuce and Domino with uh, the world. Yeah, terrible. Mm. Terrible. They, uh, they also included Naomi. Yeah. Who's married to Jimmy. So. I know. That's, uh, <laughs> but, I thought it was cool, though. Yeah, she's in the bloodline by way of injection. That's about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um. So you want to tie up the wrestling this week? Or, Ed, you got anything to add? Uh, spoken like a true wrestling fan. I love it. Um, so we, yeah. we, had, <laughs> we had a, uh, we had Kyle Weathers last week. We have mm. Toby Keith this week. So I can't really talk too much on the Toby Keith thing. Not really my musical genre, but maybe one of these fine Southern gentlemen that, uh, Hates to wear pants. Maybe we can can speak on them. Take it away, Bradford. <laughs> I mean, I, I actually have some really cool Toby Key stories. So, like, my first tour in Iraq, I came home, went and saw him in concert when that red, white, and blue song was popping. You could walk into a Kmart and not hear courtesy of the red, white, and blue. Got backstage, got to meet him, took a picture, got his autograph. He was cool as shit. Uh, the next year, I was in Iraq again. He came and did a USO tour, free concert for the troops. Got to go to see that. That was really cool. Several years later, I was in Afghanistan. He comes to do another USO tour, and they wanted people to pull security, so I volunteer my off-duty time to do that. And this jabroni, this courtesy of the red, white, and blue American soldier-loving-ass guy, no showed us, man. He he turned the plane around like midway because it was kind of dangerous and not as safe as they thought. And he booked it back to fucking Kuwait. And I wasted like six precious hours of off time that I could have been sleeping. <laughs> uh, and I've never forgave him for that. But also, you know, RIP, sorry he died. Uh, Tom, Toby Keith, got anything? Yeah, he was, he's a huge sports fan, so he kind of fit with some of our genre. He was a huge Oklahoma Sooner fan. He's always on yeah. the sidelines with JR. Jim Ross and he were always on the sideline at the OU games. And uh, I just got to say, I mean, the guy was sick with cancer. He was he, he was, was dying, and he was I was still out there in, like, December, end of December, early January. He was still doing shows. So, I mean, the guy, as much pain as he must have been in, I mean, he's he, he was still out there working. Mm, not that one time in Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah, let it go, bro. It's, it's been years. Let it go, man. Let it go. <laughs> Just uh, real quick uh, before we move on, we're, we're going to probably finish out this episode maybe talking to Super Bowl. But, Thomas, this is your part. We're usually midway through the show when we hit hit you up with the Tom's shitty picks. Finish the year, Tom. Buy the Tom, shirt. Yeah. Tom's Pick is brought to you by Brock Street Brewing Company, located at 244 Brock Street South in Whitby, Ontario. The brewery is home to a banquet hall, an on-site restaurant, and a members-only lounge. Everything they brew is done in-house, including sours, lagers, and vodka soda. 
They have something for everyone. So if you're in Whitby, go check them out. Tell them 1973 podcast sent you. Yeah. So that, before you do your picks, Tom, then when it says members only, is that like the jackets? Yeah. <laughs> No, you have to actually join. Uh, you have to spend a little coin. Okay, which it doesn't work for us. That's not going to work for us, Scotty. Who is the Zoom user? Don't Who? know. Well, I thought one of y'all was doing that. No, nope, that's not me. I <laughs> Are we getting was... hacked by China? I don't know. Tom, shitty picks. What do you got? All right, I'm Super Bowl. My Super Bowl pick this week. It's going to be. I'm going to go with t- two. I'm going with. The uh, my pick itself is going to be Kansas City. I'm going 24-20. My MVP is going to be Isaiah Pacheco. The uh, uh, let me see. I have some stats written down here. 49ers regular season they gave up 89 yards rushing a game. Playoffs they've been a sieve. They've been giving up 160 yards rushing a game. So I think Pacheco is going to have a huge game. That's my pick. There you go. So. And- Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm going does. with the 49ers, bro. I'm going 34-31 49ers, man. Um, I got a couple – I got I got some things I, I, I got to say. So, but, you know, it's funny that everybody's, you know, Vegas – so I'm going to toss this out here. I'm just going to lay this one out here. I'm going to drop a button. What the hell is going on? So, tell me this. Vegas is, got, Vegas is picking the 49ers. Sports Illustrated has got Chiefs 4-1. to one. Hmm. Thomas? I got nothing to say. You're the you're the uh, the prognosticator. You have connections at the uh, the the casinos. AC, you come on. You got to go. yeah. <laughs> what, what they say at the Waffle House. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I mean, I'll probably uh, probably be on uh, in the house some way, shape, or form, or whatever. Uh, I, I don't know. I I get this feeling that the fix is in for Kansas City because they just want that whole. You know, Disney romance thing, and there's, there's so much money riding on it. I mean, mm. who knows? I mean, you you turn around now, and everything that I do for the podcast, sometimes I'll hop around to different things, and it's, you know, uh, Half Kings this or uh, uh, Elite Sports Book. You know, I'm like, I don't, I don't even do any of that stuff, and it's all over the place. They they can't mention the Super Bowl, so they say the big game, you know, so they can get around it legally. Mm. I don't know. I just my my spidey sense is tingling. I just think it's going to be Kansas City. Ed, what do you think? Forty Niners, man. Bradford. Brad? The does the the football teams who wins does that really matter as long as Travis Kelsey proposes to Taylor Swift on the fifty yard line? Then we all win. That is that would be that's all I want to see in this Super Bowl Sunday is true love blossoming. In front of everybody. That's who, and who was that guy that just called in? Do y'all know that guy? I didn't see it. Was that the Phantom? Because I don't know. I don't know who the Phantom is. I never. I've never I seen him. I've never met him. Uh, it didn't pop up on on the thing. Did it? Are you fucking just, shitting me? No, I just saw the Zoom user thing come across. It was like a I, whole ghost wearing sunglasses thing. No, it didn't come up on mine. I just saw a Zoom user. In black. You guys are, you guys are fuck wars. No, I've man, only I, had one I have no drink idea. tonight. I can't even see anything. So, what the f- what the fuck? I was don't it, know. What the was it Chris? Was I don't know who it was. I don't. I, uh, it wasn't. No, not our Chris. I, it was some guy who like pointed at the camera, and then like this ghost sheep came up wearing sunglasses, and then it went. Oh, you guys are fuck wars. You guys saw that shit. Nope. No, sir. I'm not even high right now. What's going on? <laughs> I think Brad's in Afghanistan. I'm back in Afghanistan. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks when Toby bro, Keith in the, in the us. with the AC. So uh, back to the Super Bowl. So Tom, what do you think the outcome is for you know the the whole overall NFL season after this whole thing's done? You think, oh, uh, I think I think it's been a total success. They if this whole even if this whole thing with Taylor Swift is a work, they've made money. I mean, they've made she's brought money into them. Three hundred and thirty one million dollars. Yeah. So so they're not they're not complaining. So I mean this any, they're what what's the old saying? Uh any publicity is good publicity. So there you go. I mean it 
they've, they're actually tracking her plane flying. She's flying back from Japan right now to get back for the game. And they're actually tracking her plane. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. Lucas just brought me one of those uh, homemade Taylor Swift friendship bracelets. Oh, my God. And to, actually, to tie in with Toby Keith, I believe Taylor Swift was actually – he signed her to uh, his record company when he yep. first when she first uh, came out. So it's a yep. little – He discovered Taylor Swift. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. And thoughts on this year's uh, Super Bowl? Right. Like uh, as far as like the overall – Set up to it in the Gaga. I got nothing to add with with the Super Bowl. Like, you know, I was. Oh, I mean, I, I can actually talk about factual stuff about the game, but I mean, you know, it seems to me that like, you know, the Esquire seems like he went. He's he's turned into a Swifty here. You know. Oh. Do you think? Okay, so if the Chiefs win, regardless of the pharma, you know, all the 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 vaccine commercials that are going to roll and the Taylor Swift bullshit and how much money she's made the team, regardless of all that. Uh, Patrick Mahomes' wife also on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Um, there, there's like a 99% chance they're going to win this. Are they the next New England Patriots? They get one I'll more. Think yes they, or no? They get, I think they need to win one more after this to get one there. But they, they actually have the feel. This year right here, they have the feeling of the Patriots. Uh, the year the Patriots played St. Uh, St. Louis. When, I mean, St. Louis had that offense. Everybody, I, to me, People all expect, not expect, but the bookies, they expect San, Fr San Francisco to win this game. So I think this kind of has a feel of back then mm. when the Patriots played them. Mm. Well, I mean, I mean, I got a couple of things to say. I mean, yep. you know. Let's go, Ed. I, all right. Well, first and foremost. Let's yeah. go, Ed. All right. True stats. Postseason for Mr. Patrick Mahomes. He's 6 Let's go, Ed. His completion percentage, 70%. Okay. 11 TDs. Zero interceptions. I mean, how can you dispute that? So he, he's going to his fourth Super Bowl before he turns 30. I mean, there's some other stats. And, and then, yeah. I mean, so, like, the thing about it is, is that, like, it's going to be this. It's going to be this, right? <laughs> Not this. Without getting this. <laughs> yeah, without getting that. Or, you know, none of this either, you know? But, I mean, like, the thing about it is, it's like, look, I mean, Patrick Mahomes, he learned under Alex Smith for a couple of years. He's got Andy mm -hmm. Reid as the coach. How can you? How can he not be great? I mean, Andy Reid's everywhere he's gone, he's won. He comes from that that Green Bay tree with Mike Holmgren, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, how how can he not? Who's yeah. better, Ed? Real quick, Andy Reid, ready, or Butch Reid? Uh, I'm gonna have to say, I mean, you know, Butch Reid's got the he's got the you know what the 24 inch guns, but I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go with the cheeseburger eating guy. Uh, Tom, who's better, Andy Reid or Butch Reid? Gotta go with the the chefs, man. Andy Reid. <laughs> I will give you one th one more stat. The one thing that could make this game interesting is Brock Purdy's legs. The dude, the dude. If they can let him scramble, if they let him run, a uh, Shanahan lets him run during the playoffs. The uh, the. Uh, Chiefs are giving up a lot of yards. They're giving up almost 70 yards a game to run to the quarterbacks. Now, granted, mm. Josh Allen and, and Lamar Jackson and Tua, yeah. but, I mean, they still gave up a lot of yards. to the. And I think the, if Shanahan actually takes the reins off him a little bit, it could get interesting. In the So the regular season, Tom, the Chiefs had some 50 to 60-something drops. The wide receivers had 50 to 60-something yeah. drops. Um, so – for the Super Bowl, the MVP potentially could be Kadarius Tony if oh. they sent his ass on an appointment somewhere. <laughs> because in the postseason, they've had less than five, I think. It's yeah. something it's astronomical. Yep. Like the team that struggled with drops all season has been playing impeccably well for the postseason and, and as far as their receivers catching the ball. And the yards after the catch from the receivers is a, a, another you know, pretty impressive number. So I think Kadarius Tony send that dude down the street, put him on a mission, give him a job somewhere, and as long as he's not on the field, I give that dude the MVP because he was Mister Dropsy's all season. So, are we so, wrapping up the Super Bowl talk for the the season, or are we gonna? Yeah, no, no. some more. I mean, look, Isaiah Pacheco, he got yep. 451 playoff rushing yards. 
I mean, the man runs violent. You can't dispute that. Um, I have, uh, like, keys for the 49ers to win. I mean, they're going to keep Mahomes in check. They have to stop the run. If they can stop Pacheco, I think they're going to win. Um, if they stop Kelsey, you know, um, and they have to run – run the ball effectively, and then game plan McCaffrey. McCaffrey was the – I mean, he was – he touches the ball the most on the run and on the pass. And the Chiefs to win, I mean, run Pacheco. I mean, the thing about it is is that through the, all of the playoffs, to circle back to Tom's point, um, bottom line is is that um, the 49ers haven't been able to stop the run. Uh, let's see. You know, they need to basically, uh, you know, keep – I mean, Chiefs need to win, get the ball to uh, both Kelsey and Rice. Um Keys to stopping the, the 49ers to stop McCaffrey, um, force Brock Purdy to, you know, to win the game. And then uh, uh, for the offensive line for the Chiefs to stop Joey Bosa. I mean, that that, that would be kind of mm-hmm. like the keys to the game for both sides. And uh, I I mean, I I mean, 49ers is just a little bit more of a physical team. But I mean, the Chiefs got Mahomes and Mahomes is just he's a bad dude, man. And he is. I, mean, I saw him live at the beginning of the year in New Orleans in a preseason game and Everybody else looks like they're running in mud, and he looks like he's running in, you know, he's got, like, the power stick from Madden on, on uh, PlayStation. Yeah, and, and his ability to make a play when the play has broke down and there's nothing there is – it's uncanny. It's, it's, it's unlike anything I've ever seen in football, so. I mean, the only thing I would say that could equate to him was, like, uh, you know, Michael Vick when Michael first came mm. – when he first yeah. came to the league or Randall Cunningham uh, when – you know when Randall Cunningham was playing for the uh, for the Eagles, I mean, yeah. was that that Harry Carson stick that you know basically tried almost cut him in half and Randall broke it in and scored a touchdown? I mean that's that, that may be a little bit before your time, Brad. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys watch the Pro Bowl? Ugh, Why? No. Why? What? That is the worst All Star game in any of the All Star games. That is so bad. And they're all bad. Yeah. Uh, every Pro Bowl year, I skip the Pro Bowl and just go find that Sean Taylor hit on YouTube where he lit up the water. Yeah. That's all I need for my Pro Bowl. <laughs> Ed? Yes, sir? You, you've blown up a few Pro Bowls in your life. <laughs> <laughs> and then forgot to flush. Hey, you know... <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so what do you think wrap up the super bowl talk wrap this yeah. episode up get uh, get the old uh, winding down thomas yeah, that, yes it's time to pay some bills all righty this week's album of the week is brought to you by purchase three records located at 53 pope's island unit 2 new bedford mass you can also visit them online at purchase or on their facebook page Purchase Street Records is Southern New England's largest independent record store. Boom. There it is. So before we leave, get some shout outs going. Tomorrow, Super Bowl Sunday. Everybody's going to be watching. Hopefully, they'll watch the podcast before the Super Bowl or laugh at us while they're listening to the Super Bowl or pre gaming or whatever the hell they're doing tomorrow. Cohogging, deep sea fishing, whatever the fuck you do. Before. Man, cohogging, man. Damn. <laughs> I mean, the water's going to be a little bit chilly for that, man, isn't it? Get in there. Stop being a bitch. Stop, Stop being, being a bitch. A bitch. Come on. <laughs> Stop being a bitch and come on. And shout out this week. What do you got? I, well, first and foremost, I'd love to have, I'd love to say thank you very much to the Phantom for our, our delightful conversation that we had this afternoon, for that insightful point that he brought to us. Uh, I also want to mention to, uh, you know, this is just to make one of our sponsors happy, just to make sure that he's aware. Um, this is for you, Scotty. The Celtics record is 40 and 12. That's all I got. <laughs> we got to talk Harlem Globetrotters if we're talking NBA. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> shout out. Well, I want to give a shout out to a man who's probably like my second dad. He had an accident today. Had to go and uh, he's got like four or five stitches. He had to fall at his home. So uh, get well and uh, I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow, Big G. Mm. Bradford, what do you got? Um, I'm going to give a shout out to my man, Lucas, my my, my boy, my, my seven-year-old. He uh, 
conquered uh, some some pretty big fears and pretty big challenges um, the other night and got his black belt in Taekwondo. Um, doesn't sound like much, but he had to spar one versus two to get that black belt. Uh, it's pretty intimidating. I don't know a lot of adults that could handle themselves for a minute and a half you know, one versus two people. And um, he took his licks and he got up. He kept going, man. So super proud of him. Also, I want to shout out Mama AC. Sorry I cussed on this week's podcast. Uh, please forgive me. <laughs> 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 so what's funny about that is not only do I get chirps from my mother, I get chirps from my kids that say, Grandma was watching the podcast and she said X, Y, and Z. Or she was listening to the podcast and heard X, Y, and Z. And then when she sees me, she does nothing but go. So where do you know this guy Brad from? And I'm like, <laughs> no, don't say that. I'm like, uh, he's friends with Ed. He likes all the same stuff we like. And then she'll be like, who's this Chris guy? I'm oh. like, do I do you, do you need like a program every week? Do I have to like submit like when you go to church the minutes or, or what the pamphlet or what we're following and the hems and everything in there? Or, yeah. You know, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. But it's 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 all in good fun. One one of these times I should get her on here. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yes. And that will be a riot because th no filter on that lady. Zero filter. Zero. She will, br she will bring up stories that these guys forgot and put them on the spot on blast. And uh, you know, it, it would be hilarious. So we'll have to keep that oh, one in dude. mind. We'll have to keep that one in mind, definitely in mind. Uh, so shout out this week. My youngest scored her 85th goal of the season. She's almost close to Gretzky's 92. I don't mm. know if we're going to hit it, but 85. Come on, that's first Mazzito territory. That's Mario Lemieux territory. You got to put them in. And uh, she had a pretty epic goal I posted today on Facebook. It splits the D. Oh, Tell me she at least has 100 points. She got to have some assists. No, we don't worry about that. <laughs> we don't worry. You don't get on the YouTube highlights with assists. The, gotcha. assists, the, the, the assists years are behind us. We're all about the goals. Mm -hmm. We're going to make it happen. Like uh, Mary Tyler Moore, we're going to make it after all. So mm. we're going to wrap this. What do you say, guys? Wrap this up? Yep. Yep. So we Thank can you, enjoy. the Goon Guard. Goon Guard. Pro, uh, pro Skater. What else? Purchase Street, uh, Brock, Street. Brock Street, Brock Street, our other friends, Joe Lyons, uh, Spin 350, all these other stuff, Bradford, the professor, Mouth of the South. We'll see you after the Super Bowl. Later, Let's Chris. Let's go. <laughs>